That's it? Yes. This is my buddy Mochi. Isn't she a, a good looking girl? In this video, we're gonna go over how you can use a long-term confinement area um, to set your puppy up for success. Um, this is over there, you see there's a kennel. Kennel is kind of the old way of uh, training dogs. And you can use a kennel. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But a kennel is very restrictive and confined. The dog can't really do much. And if it's too big a kennel and the dog pees on one side of the kennel and plays on the other, then that creates an issue as well, which is why this kennel has like a divider in it. Um, I prefer, and I will never get another puppy without setting up a long-term confinement area. And I have a staff that can help me raise my puppy. You guys probably watching this probably don't have that access. Basically, a long-term confinement area is a, a fenced-in area that you have your puppy hang out in when it's young. Usually, the way I have it set up, and I talk to the guardians about it here, but they don't have it set up, it's usually more of a fencing. Can you shoot that real quick? So it's a fencing like that, um, not quite usually that tall. Let me come back here. Um, this one is fine, but she, with her height, she's going to eventually climb over it. So you want to get, uh, the one that I have has kind of is a hybrid between the two of these. It's more like that one, but it has a frame around it. For larger breed dogs, you need ones a little bit sturdier. I like to start the puppy in there when they're like eight weeks old. Uh, my puppy Quest was in there from eight weeks old until he was five months old. Now he wasn't in there a whole time. He's in there when I can't supervise him, like if I have to go to work or if I'm doing something else I can't pay attention to him because I don't want him to practice bad behaviors. I also fed him in there and he slept in there. And I created a lot of positive associations the dog wants to go in there. Just putting the dog in here and closing the door is not going to train him. That's one of the things we're going to go over in this video. But this is a great place to put your puppy, um, like when you're uh, cooking or doing things like that, uh, you're eating as a family or whatever. But if you only put me in there when you leave or you're cooking, then I look at it as a negative. We have to make it a positive first. So um, I want to do, uh, does our little man have any uh, thoughts on what we should call this? Uh, Jamaica or Hilton or uh, Newport Beach? Uh, or something along those lines? Uh, not right now. Not, you can't think of anything? All right, we're just gonna call it, how about if we call it uh, the beach for now, because we're in California. So we're gonna say the beach, yes. So what am I doing? I'm leaving the door open. So she can come in and go, and as soon as she comes up, yes. What's she doing? She's lingering in there. This is already. Yes. So as soon as she gets all four paws in there, I say yes. And the door is open, so she can come out as much as she wants. She's already lingering because there's good stuff in there. As soon as she exits, if she wants to go explode, it's fine. But as soon as she checks in with me, I'm going to roll another treat. Yes. And there's another one. Every time you take her outside, you should leave, this door should stay open all the time. And then every time she goes outside, look at that, um, I would put leave a treat in there. Every time she finds a new toy, I would leave it in there. So now look at what she's looking for more treats. Now I just left another one in there. She, it, she wasn't in there before, but again, it's causing, it's creating a positive association. So the first stage is just you want to keep on having the, um, have, them, have the dog go in there until they go in and out with no hesitation like she is right there. And I'm not having to pick her up and shove her in there. There we go. So the next stage is I want to actually close this door, but closing this door can create her feel a trapped feeling. I don't want the dog, we're, I'm a force and punishment free person. I want the dog to want to be in here. So I'm going to do... Go ahead and put her in there, throw a treat, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her over here. I want her looking at it as I'm closing the door. Yes. Sit. Does not have to sit. I know she knows how to sit, so I'm just doing this. Yes. I should take this away so I can see you the whole time. So I'm doing this very quickly. This would probably take a number of track sessions. If your dog's pawing at her or whining or jumping up on her, she's saying, I don't, I feel trapped. The whole point is I don't feel trapped. I don't want to leave here because David just keeps on hiding me treats through the side of this fence. Why do I want to leave? So the whole point of this is we want her to have a positive association. This is why it's important to practice this a couple times a day without uh, putting me in here when you're leaving or when you're actually preparing food. Now, um, so the first stage is you just want them to practice going in and out until there's no hesitation. She's already pretty comfortable with it. Guardian feeds are in here, so she's already several steps ahead. We also want to then when we close the door, when I'm closing it, again, I'm holding a tree here. If I can open the thing, there we go. And so she doesn't look at the door as something I want to leave. Because the treats are over here. And eventually then we get to latching it. And as soon as it's latched, I give her a treat. I might ask her for a sit.
Yes. And then she gets a treat. Um, I, put, I would roll this up. Uh, usually what I do is I put the kennel in the backside and I attach the fencing to the kennel, not around the kennel because the kennel takes up a lot of space. But if we attach it to the kennel, the kennel can kind of be a supporter for it. Uh, and again, you see her pawing on it. So anytime she wants to come out, we're going to let her come out uh, because otherwise we're creating that negative experience. Now, there's a little trick that you can do if you have a dog that doesn't want to go in here. You go like this, show you have treats. Just like the opposite principle where she was pawing because she wants to get out. Now she wants to go in. You don't have to do this. One of my coworkers doesn't like it when I do this, but I think it's good to create a little bit of motivation for some dogs. But if your dog doesn't want to go in there, don't keep on, you know, keep on tossing the treats until they're going in there without any hesitation. They're lingering just like she is. Um, the next stage is again, you're going to close it and treat. Close it. Yes. And then a treat. Or you can just close it and hold the treat there and close it back and forth. Uh, the whole point is we, we want this to not be something that startles her or causes her to be frustrated or concerned. Now, I'd also feed her her meals in here. You can also get a bully stick or uh, anything else that you can secure. What I like to do is get a bully stick. You're uh, you like getting up from Best Buddy. And what I do is take a bully stick like this or a longer one and drill a hole through the end of it and then zip tie it to a dumbbell or a weight in there and leave the door open. The only place she can chew on this thing is inside. She can't take it out. And so when she goes in there, good positive things happen. I, wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't pet her when she jumps up like that. And uh, so I'm not going to give her this to her because she's already had a big one today. But um, so now she might chew on it a little bit and then leave and then come back and chew on it again. And again, she has a motivation to want to go in there and good things happen through her when she does. Um, you can also get kneecaps. Anytime she gets a new toy, she should find it in here. I would get a lick mat that we talked about off camera and then put that in there. And so that she gets the expense pack. And when all these things are happening, the door is open at first. Eventually, we start closing the door, but she's engrossed in the bully stick or the kneecap or the lick mat or the food, item, whatever it is. So she doesn't feel like she wants to leave. <laughs> sit. Every time you let her out, I would ask her to sit. As soon as she sits, say yes, and then invite her out. So that creates a little bit of self-control, and, and she'll start sitting at the door as her way of saying, can I please exit? Doesn't mean she's always going to do it. Now she went in there on her own. Well, you're supposed to see that. So the next stage is when she goes in there on her own. Let's say you're watching TV or playing video games or whatever, and she goes in there on her own. We just say yes, and then we can airmail a treat in there. Your eyes were not very good for that one. Let's see that. Let's see that again. So at first we put the treats in there to lure her to go in there, but after she goes in there on her own, then we throw a treat. So let's see if I can do that again. I'm going to hold still. See if she'll go in there. You're thinking about it. There's a treat in there. There's one on the floor right over there. Do you not see it over there? Like I'm dog, I have difficulty pointing. Yes. So when she goes in there, then you just say your word. Now I like to try to put the, uh, uh, make sure that the you don't have a gap in the fence like here, because if I throw a treat in here like this, it's possible that it'll. Well, that one didn't, but Bivara's doing. They're all bouncing outside the kennel. I have a long term confinement here. Now, the best place to put this is, is like in a spare bedroom if you have one, or a finished basement, or like a laundry room. Yes. That's what I mean earlier. She went in there on her own. I said yes and gave her a treat. I didn't tell her to go in there, but when I go in there, good stuff happens. Um, this is in the living room, which is not the ideal place to put it, but we're in Southern California. Real estate's a little bit more limited. Um, you can also uh, sp spread uh, you know, all sorts of tr treat dispensing toys and puzzles and stuff in there. Every time she finds a new toy, she should find it in here as well. So again, this is just a happy place. The idea is eventually she goes in here and hangs out on her own. Now, uh, I moved this top, this is the blanket that she's got in here. I would get a kennel bed liner. It's like a white, uh, I don't know what, it, what the fat, terry cloth like fabric with a white piping around it. So the only soft place in here is usually inside the kennel, the kennel bed liner, where the door is wired open. So this kind of kennel trains your dog for you because uh, uh, the, only, uh, the only soft place to sit is in the kennel. So when you eventually start closing the door, it's not a big deal. She's already kennel trained, but it's good to, for your dog to have a kennel, uh, the skills to go in a kennel, uh, just in case she goes to boarding or to her vet or something like that. She's going to need to be comfortable being in a kennel, even if you don't plan on doing it. I use a kennel because I want to keep my dog safe and my home secure, uh, so the dog doesn't chew things up. But if uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my goal is to have the dog out of the kennel. 
So I would also put the dog in here when you're uh, eating meals, uh, you're preparing meals. There's stuff that's going on that she might get in trouble with through wrapping gifts or something like that. But I usually try to tell people that you should try to be mindful and have uh, her in there for two times for every one time you put her in there when you leave or when you're eating meals. So the two times we put her in there, these are the positive things. And so she gets a, a bully stick, she gets a chew toy, she gets a new toy, um, she's eating her food or, or a lick mat or any of these things in there. So we're building up the positive credits. So when we put her in there, she doesn't think, oh, we're just leaving her there. Yes, thank you very much, sweetheart. You're gonna take my mask down? It's coronavirus though. I gotta keep this up. Yes. All right. Um, now, uh, dogs uh, need to sleep a lot, especially puppies. Uh, a breed her size, larger breed puppies typically need to sleep about 14 to 16, 17 hours a day. Uh, they need to sleep throughout the day, not just one overnight like we do. If your dog is overly mouthy and nippy, she still has some of her puppy teeth. Um, so that's gonna cause some irritation. But if she's over underslept, those dogs often get the most uh, aggressive about their mouthy and biting us. So let's say she's attacking my leg. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna walk in here. So let's say, let's say she's attacking, come here. She's chewing on my legs. So what I would do is just walk in here, show her I have some treat, throw them on the ground. I leave and the door's latch. She's occupied and she's happy and content to be in there. And then when she gets done with the treats, I might give her a bully stick or a kneecap or something else so that she gets the ability just to sit in there and chew on it and, and enjoy it. But again, the first several days, we're having that door open, and as soon as she exits, we just throw the treat back in there. So that way, she wants to go in there, and this should be her safe place. So if she goes in here, uh, if we have kids, the kids are not allowed to go in here. Um, if she takes anything in here, if it's inappropriate, that's different. We would trade for that sort of thing. But the idea is to make sure that if she, if she, if she doesn't feel comfortable, she just goes in here, and she knows that this is my safe place. Instead of having to nip somebody else for say no, I just go over here, and they're going to leave me alone. Um, so um, I'd also, the other nice thing about this is it helps them practice being apart. So eventually what I would do is you want to start incorporating distance. This will be an interesting shot. So if it's cut off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of steps away. Come back, sit, sit. Yes. And then I take four steps away. Come back. She's still sitting. Yes. So I'm saying when I leave, it's not the end of the world, and I go completely out of the room eventually, and then come back. Now, when you first leave the room, you only want to leave it for like, uh, literally disappear from sight for a second, turn around, come back, but don't make, oh, did you make it? Don't make a big deal out of it. Just walk up very casually, give her a treat, then walk outside the, her line of sight for one second, then come back and give her a treat for two seconds. And you don't know, and if your dog gets super excited when you come back and give her a treat, I would just come back, maybe give her a little bit of a pet through here, we don't want to make it so exciting that she thinks that, oh my God, because that gets her all worked up. The idea is I want her to practice being calm in here while eventually we're all beyond her line of sight. She can hear us, she can smell us, but she cannot see us. This is helping her practice being somewhat apart from us. Right now, Ma, we have a uh, mom who's here a lot. We have a young child who's here and dad uh, has to drive a long way for work. But because of that, I don't have any practice being alone. I'm always seeing you. 50% of all dogs have separation anxiety. Post-corona, that number is much, much higher. They will often soil, bark, chew things. I've seen dogs go through windows, chew holes through walls, and it's because they don't have any practice of being alone. So I'd also like the family to practice having her in here with the lick mat when they're sitting there watching a movie. So we're in the room, but we're about 14 feet apart. That is practice being somewhat apart. I'm also practicing being here calm with my lick mat when my family's eating dinner. I'm in here chewing on a kneecap when my family is uh, making dinner, um, preparing dinner, or we're outside. Now, if we're outside having a grand old time, that's gonna be hard, she's gonna wanna participate in that. So again, same sort of thing. You might go out there, sit down on the step, wait one second, come back over here, pet her, go back out there, sit on the step. But we're doing this when there's only, it's just me. And then eventually I might do it, I sit, Yes. She was starting to whimper. I don't know if you could hear that, but I don't want her to practice whimpering or crying or any of those things. But again, so what did she do? She turned around and she left because I want to be out and then turned around and went straight back. She didn't go all the way in. But again, that's why we tossed the treats and stuff in there to give her that motivation to want to go in. 
So it's important for her, this is a big part of the reason why these are popular, is because it helps with our practice being alone so we don't develop separation anxiety later. I, for me, I would start this at eight weeks old. My puppy Quest was able to be outside of this unsupervised at five months old, which is incredibly young. Now right now there's only three toys in here, really two toys, really one shoe toy and then a couple interactive sort of toys. I like to have at least 10 toys in here at all times, if not more. Also for chewing, I looked around here and usually when I come people please stuff up. I see about three or four toys here on the floor. Everywhere your dog hangs out, there should be about a dozen toys. So instead of chewing on the furniture, I chew on the toy. Um, and that way the dog gets practiced at having uh, that good chew behavior as opposed to chewing on your furniture and the rest of that stuff. Now last little thing on chewing, uh, uh, I had given the, uh, her a bully stick and she kept on jumping up on the ottoman and on the couch to do it. As a general rule, I don't, you can do whatever's right. There's nothing wrong with having your dog chew a bone on the furniture, but it does get messy and a little bit grody. And so I usually, uh, most of my clients, I advise that they, anytime they're having something, they're chewing on something, we try to get them to chew it on here or somewhere else as opposed to on the couch. Now she's got a little squeaky toy, that's different, but an ingestible thing like a kneecap, a bully stick, something like that, a no hide, they're gonna be chewing on that and slobbering it on, the, on your stuff and then you sit on it and you're gonna have some weird stuff on your butt later on. So you might, let, might not wanna do that. Uh, also, if you have a little puppy, once you let it start laying on the furniture, they really wanna be on the furniture. For dogs, the higher they sit, the more rank or social status they have. So just like children, um, we don't come home and give our kids access to everything that we give them access to here, everything in here is safe. I know that there's no trouble that you can get into. So the dog develops good chewing habits. It doesn't practice chewing the wrong things. Problem with chewing is it's not uh, really a habit born of opportunity, but all attention is validated. So if the dog starts chewing on the furniture or the carpet or barking or having an accident, we say stop, that gets it attention. This is why earlier in the session I went over the importance of celebrating desired behavior. So every time you're sits on its own, you say yes and pet it. Every time it comes to you, yes, looks at you, lays down, uh, drinks its water, poops. The more you reward your dog for the things you like, the more your dog is gonna offer those particular behaviors. Like if I go in here, it rains treats. Well, then I'm gonna go in here more and more often. Did you not see that? You're, at, you're a hunting dog, you're supposed to be, have good eyes. There we go. All right, well this is my little buddy Mochi, and these are some tips on how you can use a long-term confinement area to keep your dog from developing chew habits and getting into some trouble.